This video is part of a joint project by the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings and Historic England. Trials were undertaken to investigate best practice for the maintenance and repair of cobbled church paths in Devon. These cobbles are laid in the traditional manner, not in cement, and traditional paths are restrained at the edges by walls or curbs. If the curbs fail and are not repaired, the path will begin to disintegrate. Traditional cobbles are bedded in subsoil. This lies below topsoil, has a different composition and doesn't contain organic matter that encourages plant growth. Earth, or soil, in this video means subsoil. All the sequences in this video were shot on a particularly wet day, so you should bear that in mind when watching. I'm Jo Cox and I'm a historic buildings consultant, mostly working in Devon. Uh, what I'd like to come out of this project is the survival of cobbled church paths in Devon and not to see them replaced with tarmac or concrete. And if you go round and look at the, I think, 600 or so parish churches in the county, we do have tarmac, tarmac everywhere. And this has completely changed the sense of arrival at the building or the sense of the special dignity and atmosphere of the churchyard. Ideally, as much DIY, good quality maintenance and small scale repair as can be done and to investigate and see how much help better lighting, handrails, sensible notices might provide to assist safe and equal access for all, but also people looking down and really appreciating, in the same way as people now appreciate thatch and cob, at a, a wonderful example of a simple vernacular tradition that's converted local materials into something fine for which we no longer have the time to do now. Behind me is the beautiful curving path lined by yew trees that takes us into the church down what seems to me to be a really magical routeway. You get glimpses of the church as you go down and you have a sense of arrival which is actually really very magical. Not all cobble church paths are quite as lovely as this one at Merton. We simply shouldn't be losing any more of them and we must try and find ways and means and compromise that mean that those that we've still got can be kept. I am Richard Burrows from Williams and Burrows. Um, I'm partner of the company. We're undertaking a pilot to discover how the path is constructed that's then going to inform what the repair strategy is going to be and likewise potentially for other paths in Devon as well. The build of the path itself is straightforward but you need to understand that there are certain elements of it that lock the cobbles together. So what you'll find is you will have certain stones that go past the screed, if you like, that the cobbles are set into and into the substrates. Those then lock bulk areas together, whilst at the same time you have the curbs that will also hold the edging together. Likewise, the lozenges in the middle also act as a means of containing the cobbles themselves as well. We've decided to carry out localised repairs to try and ascertain the makeup of the path itself, hopefully leading to an informed decision as to what to do to the remainder. We decided not to use concrete or sand and cement. We've decided to try and introduce some haunching to the backs of the curbs to stop the drift, but obviously time will tell as to whether that's been a success or not. Tools are very basic. To disassemble the path, it's get an, a leading edge and the cobbles will fall out to reassemble, reactivate with water the clay and the aggregate that's come out, set the cobbles in and then it'll be a case of backfilling to secure in place. It's a simplistic method of laying a path that is very effective. Putting together a plan to repair the damaged parts of a cobbled path requires some preparation to ensure you preserve the design and structure of the path. 
the work you undertake must also be done safely, legally and in accordance with the policies of the relevant authorities, such as the local planning and conservation officers. Work to church paths may need the approval of the diocese, which can also provide useful advice. Maintenance and making minor repairs to small areas of a path is the most effective way to preserve it. Regular weeding and packing any gaps between the cobbles with subsoil will help prevent deterioration and the need for repair, so a good maintenance regime pays dividends. If you want to make major changes, permission may be needed from the local planning authority or the diocese before work is started. Right, with these health warnings, you're now ready to start planning the repair and restoration. The first task is to document and understand the way the path was put together and its current state, which can easily be done using a camera to record each damaged area you intend to repair. Use a piece of timber placed over damaged areas to identify the correct level to which the cobble should be relayed. Make notes of any issues you spot as you go. The images should be stored and notes made of the area they cover on a simple outline drawing of the path layout. If you print the pictures out of the parts you plan to repair, you can then shade the areas to be raised and repaired, and when you're ready to start, lay out your planned repair areas on the ground using string and simple pegs to ensure that you only lift the cobbles you need to. You'll also need these pictures to ensure you replace the cobbles as they were in the same pattern and layout as before, once you've levelled the subsoil underneath ready to restore the cobbles. A useful piece of advice is not to bite off more than you can cope with at once, so parcel up the work into discrete areas and plan to work on them one or two at a time, so to minimise the amount of time they need to be out of use and spread the project over a reasonable time to make best use of volunteer labour. Whilst the path is being repaired, clearly rope off the areas and post warning notices to protect people from trip hazards. Once you identify the areas of your path you feel need to be repaired, if it's a churchyard path, now is the time to run this past the diocese, who can help you work out what needs to be done and give advice on how to achieve effective repairs. They can also advise on other measures, such as whether to install permanent handrails or public notices as appropriate. As to tools and materials, a few mallets or small hammers, trowels, a spade and something suitable like a small crowbar to lever out the first cobbles, as well as a quantity of subsoil as similar as possible to that already under the cobbles will be needed to raise any sunken areas. String and small stakes are essential to ensure you relay the cobbles correctly. Finally, a hand brush is used to finish off. OK, now let's see how it's done. Here's a photograph of a section of path which, as you can see from the gap under the measuring pole, has slumped into the ground. The cobbles must be removed, the bedding underneath packed up to the same level as the base of the cobbles either side, then the cobbles can be relayed to restore the area. And here is the same area once this has been done. You can see that a hand brush is being used to sweep subsoil into the cracks between the cobbles to pack them out and prevent any movement and level them up. Investigate the bedding material. Most traditionally laid cobbles are bedded in subsoil. You'll probably need more bedding material for your repair and you will need to find somewhere close by and permission to dig some more from underneath the local topsoil. If the original bedding material seems to have sand or grit added, it's a good idea to repeat this. No two paths are exactly alike. Once all the cobbles in the area have been removed, the next stage is to put new subsoil into the hole and ram it down to the same level as the bases of the other cobbles still in place. Make sure that the cobbles are tightly packed and in contact, like dry stone walling, with the fewest possible gaps and with a cob between acting as a matrix to fill the remaining gaps and flush up the joints between the stones. This gives the path stability and makes it more level to walk on. Getting the soil well compacted is vital to ensure the repair is effective and coarse grit mixed into the new soil will reduce the risk of subsidence. This is a sort of heavy rammer originally used to lay the cobbles, so something similar would be ideal to use today to tamp down the cobbles you've relayed. A large broad mallet or even a polythene container filled with soil to weigh it down. It's important to ensure that the edges of the path are not failing because they're essential to hold the cobbles in place. So if they have shifted, they'll have to be raised too and rebedded. Haunching the outside of the edging curb stones with a suitable lime mortar is a good option and this can then be earthed over to conceal it. 
Right, with a subsaw well rammed home and level, you can begin to relay the cobbles. Start on one side of the gap and using a mallet, gently hammer home the cobble until it's flush with the previous row behind. Work across the face of the exposed cobble edge, replacing the cobbles to match the essential character of the cobbling here. Distribute the longer dog tooth cobbles evenly through the new cobbles and hammer them home much deeper so they act as a tooth into the substrata to anchor the sequence of cobbles. As you work across the exposed face of the cobbles, use the base of the mallet or hammer to bank the soil up against the row you're working on to firmly bed them in and more soil to top up the base level if you need to as you go. Where there are features like the central diamonds in the path at Merton Church which need to be relayed, take time to fully document them, then carefully disassemble the pattern and lay the cobbles out in sequence as you remove them, because getting them to fit back correctly can be more of a challenge than linear cobbling. Once all the cobbles are relayed, check they're all level and tamped down as necessary. You may find it useful to place a board over an area of relayed cobbles and hammer the board to make sure the cobbles have an even surface. The final stage is to sprinkle some subsoil over the repaired area and use the hand brush to drive it into the gaps between the cobbles to pack them out to prevent any movement working them loose. This may need to be done again after rain or you may prefer to water the area of the watering can. Using a hose will dislodge the infill. The project is preparing some more detailed advice on cobblestone repair. This will be available in 2016.